Peace. This is King Noble Black Supremacy. And with this particular video, I want to talk about AIDS. And I want to talk about AIDS in a different kind of way. I mean, people talking about AIDS is a hoax. I'm sure you heard that. You can find that information out for yourself about the AIDS hoax. It's really not new information. There's a lot of information out on it. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to waste this video to regurgitate any of that information. However, before the end of the video, I will express some of my theories, or at least one of my theories. But I'm going to let you all do the AIDS hoax research for yourself. And as AIDS is explained by scientists and doctors who capitalize off the pharmaceuticals, that explanation is out there as well. So you pretty much got that. You can research that, find it, find it out yourself. Google it. You know, it's probably in your basic biology book maybe. So I'm not going to touch on that either. Nor I'm going to refuteate that information. With this particular video, I want to deal with the HIV AIDS question. That's what I would probably prefer to call this video, the question of HIV and AIDS. I just want to deal with the question of it to maybe bring some insight into what is happening and what is going on now around the debate or the dialogue. Well, why is it a question if HIV is real? Why is there a question? Why does this question even exist? The question is if Ebola is real does not exist. The question of if cancer is real does not exist. The question of is, was the bubonic plague in the dark ages of Europe? Is it real? Is the common cold real? What about the flu? Is it real? Snake bites, diabetes, are these things real? The question does not arise as to if these things are real. No one's asking, but they want to know or they question, is HIV real? Why? Why is it not evident? Well, because there's a process, some people would argue, where, where it takes time to, to, to take its full course for you to really know or see the reality or the evidence of it. Well, that's the same thing with diabetes. You can be diagnosed with diabetes and you don't see the immediate effects of diabetes. Um, there's a few other things you can be diagnosed with and you don't see the immediate effects of. So why do we still question it? HIV, what is about it that, that makes it questionable that intelligent people who have access to all the information you can imagine through the internet why would they be question, still questioning that? How is that questionable, though? What's questionable about HIV and AIDS for so many people to question something that should be evident at this point? A lot of intelligent minds, people who can research, and people that's living in a real world that are exposed to people every day with so many manners of diseases. How is it that these people can still question if HIV is real. Why is it that any individual in 2018 would have to look up the symptoms of HIV? Isn't it obvious? It is a catastrophic disease. It is a pandemic, an epidemic, 
Why would anyone have to look up symptoms for it at this point in time in the game? Why? This thing been around for definitely over 40, 50 years, even more. So society as a whole has had exposure to it. There should be enough evidence, enough people that died, dropped dead. Why would anyone have to question it? Then that makes you ask, is there something that is questionable about HIV that perpetuates the question of its existence? Is there something questionable about it? Because obviously that there is, because these are very, very uh, astute people. People willing to do the research, people willing to get to the truth of it. And people who would not deny the overwhelming evidence in society of this disease are the people who are questioning it questioning it fools or is it questionable the fact that it could be questioned after 50 to 60 years makes it even more questionable doesn't help at all with the question. Are they questioning if it exists? Are they questioning how it exists? What are they questioning? So the question itself to me and and, and if, if some people are so clear that this, this exists and there's so much evidence in society that HIV exists, overwhelming evidence obviously with the statistics that we've seen from the CDC, clearly that's overwhelming evidence. You go to the grocery store, somebody's falling out from AIDS. You go to the restaurant, somebody fell out on the floor from AIDS. Clearly there's overwhelming evidence of this. Why is anybody questioning? Why is anybody entertaining the questions if it's evident? That's another question. If you know something is evident, why are you entertaining the questions? Are the questions entertaining? Or are they, are they good questions? Is it really questionable? Like you got to go to Wikipedia, you got to go to WebMD. Just go outside your door if it's so evident. Go to your own family, go to people that you know who are suffering from this plague. It's so evident. It's everywhere. So they said 70% of black women in Fulton County supposedly have HIV and AIDS. Per se, one or the other, I don't know. Why are we still questioning it if that's the fact? The evidence is clear. Or is it just in statistics? Is it just in books? Is it just in information? Is it just on websites? Or is it in the real world in a way where it, it, it's evident to us? Is it showing up in the real world in a way that is evident to us? I'm not going to deal with how it is questioned and the type of questions that are asked. I'm just, why is it questionable? At this point, if it ain't questionable. Why is it questionable if it's not questionable? Mm. Especially at how serious and how much of an atrocity and travesty that it is promoted to be. 
the evidence should be unquestionable. Unless that shit is questionable. That's what I'm dealing with. Still questionable. Obviously. Obviously. These people that we depend on for information, both sides, we depend on people that are conscious, that are doing their research to give us information. And both sides are questioning. And to both sides, it appears questionable. The question remains. The question remains. That's what we can say for sure. Obviously. That's not because of me. It's not because of my thoughts. It's not because of my research. It's because the question is continuing. The question is still going. Hmm. Questions don't kill people. Questions don't murder people. People don't die of questions. Is the whole world in fear of a question? Hmm. Do the pharmaceutical industries and immunotherapists, are they worried about the question? What about people who sell condoms? Are they concerned about that question? Hmm. Interesting. Before I end the video, I just want to touch on that. I don't want to... I just want to show you that I don't understand how that question is still existing. And it's questionable, I guess. That's the only conclusion that I can come to. That even if you don't agree with me that it is a hoax, or you don't agree with me that it's real, you at least have to agree that it is still questionable because it is being questioned. Especially within the conscious community. These people that read, they open books, study. They got a question. There should be enough evidence physically where you don't have to question. You should have seen enough with the way it has been propagated and promoted. If it's not just propaganda, you should have seen enough to not even really question that anymore unless that shit is still questionable. But let me get to my theory. For one, you don't possess an immune system. Take it or leave it. You don't possess an immune system. Really, you don't possess anything. That's the crazy thing about life. Everything flows through you. And that your existence is, is suspended an animation of a lot of things that are constantly flowing through you. Molecules, atoms, nutrition, substances, elements, water. And you are 99.9% .9 empty space. So you don't possess an immune system. If you stop intaking anything, only thing you really, only thing someone can argue that you would possess is bones. Stop eating and ingesting anything and you will possess nothing but bones. What is considered to be you would be a deterioration. This is common sense. So you don't possess anything but what you appear to possess or what you appear to be composed of is based on what you consume. So what your immune system is, is a, is a relationship between what's already there in your body and what you put into it. So immunity is a relationship or reaction between what the body has temporarily and what it assimilates 
or what it integrates within itself based on what you consume. So your immune system is really what you eat every day. It's the way you live. Your system of life is your immune system. It's not stagnant. It's not sitting inside of you. And your immunity will be based on what you consume, period. Which is why they're giving you people cocktails and supposedly giving them medications because that stuff is now replaced or become their new immune system. Whatever the doctors is giving them under the auspices of whatever they have it's become their new immune system. Well, I want to tell you that there are many different types of immune systems, just like there are different types of communication systems. There's different types of immune systems. Every person that exists is a unique immune system. The way they live, the way they eat, where they get their vitamin C from, where they get their nutrients from, how they um, deal with the bacteria in their body, the friendly bacteria, um, pathogens, what they consume that addresses these things that are going on in their body through what they consume. That's their immune system. And people consume different things. Everybody don't eat the same. Some people eat way more this and way more that. So our immune systems are different based upon what we consume. So no one can look at your immune system in a snapshot way and say, well, this is your immune system. They may can look at where your immunity is at because the body may be below a certain level of this, that, or the other. But they cannot assess your immune system unless they look at the entirety of your life and everything that you do, everything that you eat, how you handle stress, how you meditate, how you do yoga, what you're putting in your body, unless they can, t they can actually log all of that. Then they cannot determine where your immune system is. They just can tell where your immunity is at, at that moment. Your system of eating, eliminating, drinking, dealing with stress, that is your true immune system, not in your body. So your immune system can change. When you change, your immunity could change when you change your immune system, your system of being immune, which is very conscious, which is very uh, dealing with your lifestyle, dealing with what you, what you eat, what you do, how you live. This is a fact. But they're saying, no, you're going to take what we have, and that's going to become your new immune system. So they're giving people their own form of their own immune system. They're selling you an immune system. They're giving you a pharmaceutical immune system. This is just a reality. When nature has many different types of immune systems, people live in different climates, different atmosphere, different terrains. So they have to have a system of being immune to their environments based upon their diet, what they eat, how they deal with stress, whatever. So your immune system cannot be assessed by a doctor. Well, they can look at your immunity. They cannot really determine how your immune system is going to be for the next 10 years or 20 years because you could change up your system of doing things, your system of intake, which would change your immunity. Bottom line. If your system of being immune doesn't work for you, then you have an immune deficiency, period. Because the system of immunity that you're using is not working for you. You're not eating the right things. You're not drinking the right things. You're not thinking the right things. So 
you have an immune deficiency. A lot of people walking around here with immune deficiencies because they're just not eating the right things. So they end up sick because they don't have a, their immune system. Not in their body, but the way they live is just not a good system. No immune system in your body. Your body is being constantly regenerated by what you're putting into it and how it is relating to the environment. So your body is just, you're not this stagnant, separate individual that's walking around separated from everything, that your immune system is your relationship to everything. That's a fact. So, I just want to touch on that. Now, nobody can tell you, anybody, when they're going to die for sure. That's their God. So that's not true. That they can they can look at a person and say, Well, this is this is when you're gonna die. Which is the worst thing about telling somebody that they have AIDS or HIV is that you're literally telling them when they're gonna die as though you know. And and, and then you're telling them that they're definitely not gonna die if they don't depend on you and use what you have. Then if that is not the greatest sales pitch in the world. I think every salesman would love that pitch. That if you don't take my product, which is an immune system, a system of being immune that was designed by a pharmaceutical industry, you're definitely going to die. Man, that got to be the best seller in the world, man. That got to be a billion dollar product. If I could tell you, if you don't buy this, you're going to die. I mean, damn. I don't even need no true sales skills. I mean, that's pro that's a product that sells itself. That got to be deeper than, than selling crack or heroin. I mean, you selling fear. I mean, a person on opioids or heroin at least feel like they're going to die if they don't get it. But now you have to, you telling people they're going to die if they don't take your immune system and they don't have very long to live, if they don't buy into this product that you have. You're selling death. You're selling fear. That's heavy. But no one knows when anyone is going to die. You can change up your life in so many dramatic ways. And there's so many different types of immune systems that you could study and learn and take on. It, 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 the research just goes on and on forever. And just the fact that they have not cured this questionable disease shows that they have not exhausted the research, which means that they have no definitive um, conclusion on what won't work. They have not exhausted everything to even find out what actually works, according to them, to completely rid the body of that. So no one knows when anybody's going to die. So that's, that's, that's just false. I can just tell you that right off the bat. Nobody knows. That's a fact. So they're lying. If somebody's telling you you're going to die if you don't do this at this particular point in this amount of years, that's a lie. That's not even questionable. That's a lie. Nobody knows how long anyone is going to live or die. That's just period. No one really knows that. They could be surprised. And there's a lot of surprises, which makes shit questionable. Like if you get Ebola, you're pretty much going to die within a certain amount of days, weeks, maybe two weeks, maybe. And everyone who gets Ebola is pretty much going to die at that same time. But people who have this acquired immune deficiency or HIV seem to die at different points. So we can't really put it together. They, it's, it's not that solid. We, we don't know for sure if they're going to die in a week or a month, a year. They live at different timelines. Some of them go 15 years without medication, 10 years without medication, 20 years without medication. Some of them tend to die in a couple of years with the medication. So we just, we don't know. That's what shit like that makes it questionable. Pretty questionable. But no one knows when anyone is going to die. And that, that knocks out half of it. The question of death. 
knowing that. That's some psychic shit. You know what I'm saying? That's really psychic. Really psychic, man. You don't know how someone could change their life or what they can come into or come across or what type of system of immunity that they can become aware of. And that's why people listen to people like Dr. Sabi and, and start study a lot of this information and, and other teachers because they know that, you know, all systems of immunity have not been exhausted by these people that are so for sure on where your immune system is going to be at without even giving that individual an opportunity to exhaust all the different systems of immunity that exist. But I didn't want to just go too long on that. But I want to say that, you know, no one knows when anybody's going to die. So that, that's a lie. That's just, just not true. You know, that, that's, that helps it be, be more questionable. And, and research has shown that, that these people are not even dying at the same time, within the same time frame. So it's sloppy. Because I guess even their lifestyle determines that, I guess. Their system of immunity determines if they're going to die in five years or 10 years or 20 years, which is pretty much the same for everybody. If you completely neglect yourself, your body, and your health, then don't come up with a proficient form, a proficient immune system, a system of being immune, then you're pretty much going to have an immune deficiency. The, the definition of life could be the experience of a system of being immune to nature and all the elements, diseases, bacteria, pathogens for as long as you can. That could be the definition of life, a system of immunity. That's the definition of living, lifestyle. So your lifestyle should be a system of immunity. Don't just think as an, an immune system in your body and you can do whatever you want to do and, and something in your body got you. Nah. Your life is your system of immunity. And if you want a different, a better immune system, change your system of being immune. Eat more, be more, and live more for your own immunity. Uh, there's lots of foods for that, for the immune system. And lots of foods that make up a good system of immunity. This is a fact. They even tell you when flu and cold season is coming, start getting your immune system up. They tell you this. Get your vitamin C, get the things that you need in your body because flu and cold season is coming. So they're trying to tell you to get your system of immunity up. Your immune system was never in your body just operating right. It always was about what you consumed. It always was that. You're consuming your immunity every day. You just think you're just eating red 40 and yellow 7 and just sugar and all this. You didn't know that the whole reason of eating is to have a system of immunity to stay on the physical plane, to be immune from these elements and these pathologies and bacterias, pathogens and bacterias and etc. This King Noble Black Supremacy. Join my website www.kingnobleblacksupremacy.com Donate and donate.